Hi everyone, my name is Ria. In this presentation, I will be discussing my research and implementation of the paper titled Symbolic Discovery of Optimization Algorithms. This paper explores the use of symbolic methods to automatically discover new optimization algorithms. Through this innovative approach, the authors were able to uncover the Lion Optimizer, a novel algorithm in the field. I'll share my insights, methods, and results from my implementation. Optimizers play a crucial role in speeding up the training and learning process of models. Some well-known optimization algorithms are gradient descent, stochastic gradient descent, ADAM, and ADAMW. The main objective of this research is to automatically discover new and effective optimization algorithms. Gradient descent is the foundational optimizer that helps us minimize the loss function in our models. This is the formula. Wt is the updated weight at step t. Wt minus 1 is the weight at previous step. Alpha is the learning rate and Gt is the gradient at step t. It updates the weight in the opposite direction of the gradient, ensuring we move closer to the optimal solution with each step. Next, let's talk about ADAM, which stands for Adaptive Moment Estimation. It combines the benefits of both momentum and RMS prop, making it, it more efficient and effective than standard gradient descent. Here, M represents the first moment estimate, which is the running average of the past gradients. It accelerates the optimization process. M hat is the bias corrected first moment estimate. It's important because M can be biased towards zero at the start, which can cause unstable updates. By correcting this bias, M hat helps prevent high oscillations and provides a smoother optimization path. V is the second moment estimate, which tracks the running average of the squared gradients. It helps to measure the variance and stabilize updates by adjusting the learning rate. V hat is the bias corrected second moment estimate. Epsilon is a small constant to prevent division by zero. Beta one and beta two are decay rates. In the formula, M hat handles momentum by tracking the gradient's moving average, while square root of V hat updates the learning rate based on the variance of the squared gradients similar to RMS prop. Now that we have discussed gradient descent and ADAM, let's move on to ADAM W, which stands for ADAM with weight dk. Here's the formula. An additional term lambda into wt minus one is added compared to ADAM. This term represents weight dk, which helps to regularize the model by penalizing large weights and can lead to better generalization. Next, let's look at how algorithm discovery can be approached as program search. For designing the program search space, we follow three main criteria. First, the search space needs to be flexible to uncover novel algorithms. Second, the programs should be easy to analyze and fit into existing machine learning workflows. Finally, we focus on high level algorithmic design rather than getting bogged down by low level implementation details. This approach ensures a broader and more effective exploration of potential optimizers. The program defines a train function which encodes the optimization algorithm being searched for, but the main inputs are the model weight, the gradient, and the learning rate. The main output is the update to the weight. The program also incorporates extra variables initialized as zeros to collect historical information during training. It consists of a sequence of assignment statements with no restrictions on the number of statements or local variables. Each statement calls a function using constants or existing variables as inputs, and the resulting value is stored in a new or existing variable. 45 common math functions are selected for the program. These include unary functions like cos, sine, tan, binary functions like plus, minus, multiplication, division, power, max, min, and linear algebra functions like norm, clip, interpolate, etc. Next, let's discuss mutations in our evolutionary search. There are three types of mutations. Inserting a new statement at a random location with random functions and arguments. Deleting a random chosen statement and 
modifying a ra random statement by altering one of its arguments. This could involve replacing it with an existing variable or a new constant. These mutations help us explore a wide range of potential optimizations. The program search space is indeed infinite, meaning there are countless possible programs. This is a rough estimate of the number of possible programs, where nf is the number of possible functions, nv is the number of local variables, na is the average number of arguments per statement, and l is the program length. However, high-performing programs are sparse within this vast space. A random search through 2 million programs revealed that most were inferior to Adam W. This highlights the challenge of finding optimal algorithms in such a vast search space. So, let's explore the search techniques used for navigating the infinite search space. Our first search technique is evolution with warm start and restart. This method uses regularized evolution, which is simple and scalable and excels in many autonomous tasks. We maintain a population of algorithms that evolve over cycles. Each cycle uses tournament selection, where a few algorithms are chosen at random and the best performer is mutated to produce a new algorithm. By default, we use a tournament size of 2 and a population size of 1000. We warm start with Adam W to speed up the process. To enhance efficiency, we apply two types of restarts. One that restarts from the initial program to explore different local optima, and one that restarts from the best algorithm found so far to optimize it further. This approach significantly outperforms hyperparameter tuning and random search. Let's now look at the next search technique pruning through abstract execution. This technique is crucial for keeping our program search space efficient and manageable. First, we tackle errors head on. We perform an abstract execution step that infers variable types and shapes, catching any syntax or type errors before the program even runs. If errors are detected, we keep mutating the parent program until we generate a valid child. Next, we use a unique hashing system to identify and eliminate functional equivalent programs. This means that if two programs produce the same results, we only keep one, reducing the redundancy. Finally, we trim down redundant statements. By recognizing and ignoring these during execution, we streamline the process and save valuable resources. Abstract execution is lightweight compared to the actual execution, making it a powerful tool for avoiding pitfalls and ensuring our search space remains smooth and effective. To manage the search cost efficiently, low-cost proxies are employed. These proxies are created by reducing the model size, cutting down the number of training examples, and shortening the training steps compared to the target tasks. This approach allows for quicker evaluations. In each search experiment, around 200 to 300,000 programs are generated. However, with the help of abstract execution and caching, only about 20 to 30,000 programs need to be evaluated in detail. This significant reduction in the number of evaluations is crucial for making the search, search process both time and resource efficient. Search experiments initially discover promising programs using proxy tasks. However, to ensure these programs generalize well, they are evaluated on larger, more complex meta-validation tasks. This involves a funnel selection process where the scale of tasks gradually increases from smaller proxy tasks to significantly larger ones. For example, start with a smaller proxy task A. Then create a task B that is 10 times larger by increasing both the model size and training steps. Only algorithms that excel on task B are then tested on task C, which is 100 times larger. This approach helps in filtering out algorithms that don't generalize well, leading to the selection of those that perform effectively on larger real-world tasks. Simpler programs are easier to understand and are more likely to generalize. Therefore, redundant or minimally impactful statements are removed and the programs are converted into their simplest mathematically equivalent form. This slide shows one state in the evolution of 
the lion optimizer the program displayed represents an intermediate stage with redundant statements still present it provides a glimpse into the program's complexity before the final optimization was applied this is the lion algorithm discovered through the steps we saw earlier lion stands for evolved sign momentum Arriving at the Lion Optimizer was due to its simplicity, memory efficiency, and strong performance in search and meta validation. It only keeps track of the momentum. Lion's unique approach involves using the sign of gradient rather than directly using momentum to make updates. By taking the sign operation, Lion ensures that the updates have a uniform magnitude across all dimensions and use less memory. In the formula, you can see that we are using the sign of CT rather than directly using the variable m in the formula. It uses beta 1 to balance the current and past gradients in CT. This ensures that the immediate gradient information has a significant impact while still considering the momentum from past gradients. Line uses beta 2 for updating the momentum. This keeps a long history of past gradients through mt, which helps to smooth out the updates over time. Additionally, the regularization term lambda into wt minus 1 helps prevent overfitting by penalizing large weight values, ensuring the model remains generalizable and robust. What the key difference between these algorithms? Line uses the sign of CT for updates and combines both the current and past gradients to determine CT, whereas Adam W uses both first and second moments of the gradients directly in the weight update. Lion focuses on the direction of the gradient rather than its magnitude, ensuring consistent updates and maintaining a memory of past gradients for smoother optimization. Adam W uses detailed statistical measures of the gradient, taking into account both its mean and variance for nuanced updates. In essence, Lion's approach simplifies the gradient update process by focusing on the direction of the combined gradient and momentum while maintaining a long-term gradient history to stabilize updates. Based on the paper, it is suggested that Lion typically requires a learning rate 3 to 10 times smaller than that of Adam W and a decoupled weight DK that is 3 to 10 times larger compared to Adam W. Additionally, the advantage of Lion over Adam W increases with the larger batch sizes and Lion has a faster runtime than Adam W. To test the findings from the paper, I evaluated Lion against Adam W. Performance profiles are used to compare the efficiency of different solvers across multiple problems. They help us understand how often each solver performs close to the best possible solution. I took five different data sets and four solvers. Lion with batch size 64, Lion with batch size 256, Adam W with bad size 64 and Adam W with bad size 256. On the X axis, we have the performance ratio, which represents the ratio of the time taken by a solver to the time taken by the best solver for each problem. Y axis shows the proportion of problems that each solver can solve within a given performance ratio. Adam W with bad size 64 is the quickest solver as it reaches a cumulative probability of 1 at a lower performance ratio. It demonstrates superior performance compared to other algorithms. This table summarizes the accuracy results for various data sets when using Adam W and Lion optimizers with different batch sizes. For Cayman IST data set, Lion achieves slightly higher accuracy with larger batch size. Adam W with batch size 64 shows marginally better performance for MNIST dataset. Adam W has a slight edge over Lion for Cypher 10 dataset. Lion outperforms Adam W for Fashion MNIST and SVHN dataset. Overall, Lion performs better in some datasets, but the improvements are not significant. It remains competitive. The best performance line showed was for the SVHN dataset. The graph clearly highlights this difference, demonstrating Lion's strength in this specific dataset. Additionally, the spikes in the graph are due to the batch size, with each iteration processing 64 data points. For KMNIST dataset, the performance of both optimizers is 
quite competitive. Both Lion and Adam W achieve similar levels of accuracy throughout the training process. This is the graph for the MNIST dataset. We can see that Adam W consistently outperforms Lion in terms of accuracy. However, Lion's performance is still relatively close to Adam W, indicating it is not significantly worse. In conclusion, although Lion showed better performance than Adam W in the paper's dataset, it did not significantly outperform Adam W on my dataset. Lion didn't achieve superior results for the datasets I used. Lion remains a competitive optimizer, but its performance was not compelling enough to justify replacing Adam W. It appears that Lion does not generalize well. While it performed effectively in the paper's dataset, it fell short in the dataset tested here. This suggests that Lion might not be as versatile as initially anticipated. It might be possible that better potential optimizers were missed in this vast search space. Despite increasing the batch size for Lion, Adam W continued to be performed reliably, proving to be the more dependable option. Therefore, Adam W continues to be the preferred choice because of its consistent and reliable performance. Thank you for your attention. I hope you find the insights and findings valuable.